So uh, I'll be chairing the morning session. My name is Oksana Smirnova, and I would like to, to welcome Anne-Katrin Backlund to tell us about Puffendorf Institute. Please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, and uh, in a way, I could greet you welcome to the Puffendorf Institute, even though we are at Faculty of Science. I'm well aware where we are. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, and um, I take it that uh, a large part of the group here is from the data theme uh, at Pufendorf Institute of Advanced Studies. And then we have an outer ring of close friends and associates and some foreign friends, some new friends and some old friends. Uh, and I'm very, very pleased that you are having this conference. Uh, as um, society, it's a, we are living in a very exciting time. At least I, as a social scientist, think every morning is extremely exciting because uh, changes and developments are so rapid. Uh, society, as well as research, is, you could say, in, uh, in an upheaval. And um, data of all kinds uh, is right in the middle of this uh, rapid change. It's data processing, it's use, and if there is an English word, disuse of data. It's archiving, it's access or non-access, and control of data, uh, which is very much in the center of the present development technologically, scientifically, and societal. So I wish we had three competing themes at our institute uh, dealing with the issue of, of data in various ways. I'm glad there is one theme. I would have wished even more. Uh, I'd like to go back the combi uh, to, to th around 2000 and the Lisbon strategy, European Union Lisbon strategy for competition and economic growth, because there are sort of two, two forces. It's the, um, it's the more fierce competition between uh, the continents uh, and uh, and the knowledge economy and the knowledge society, uh, which at the core is again data. It was formulated in the, um, in the strategy uh, to make the European Union the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economy in the world, as opposed to the Asian economies, of course. And the universities were dubbed to be the engine of growth in this uh, comp economic competition. Uh, and um, the universities and the research should be this engine of growth uh, in innovation, commercialization of knowledge, technology transfer, to drive the economic growth and influence policy nas on national, regional, and global level. And we should work shoulder by shoulder with external partners, with society at large, and uh, with industry. So uh, this is a very strong driving force on universities and research and the interest that is now placed on our shoulders, we could say. And um, contrary to many other countries, the Swedish state budget for research has increased over the last 10 years. It has not decreased. We are not always happy where they are placing money, but they are placing money on research. Um, this is, uh, and the drive behind this is that research should solve the problem. That could be sustainability, that could be peace, that could be uh, equal societies, etc., etc. And a lot of hope is placed on the new processing 
gathering and use of data in all kinds of services to people and to industry. But with a lot of money, and actually the Swedish state budget for uh, research and education is the biggest uh, public bu budget of the state. And sometimes I've heard people say, um, uh, like, well, it's even bigger than the defense budget. And I said, yes, beautiful. Uh, imagine a state where education and training and research is bigger than the defense budget. I'd like to live in that country, uh, but that would soon change. Uh, but it also comes with uh, having such a big budget of public spending, uh, you get a lot of demands. So you have to be useful, you have to be commercialized quickly, uh, it has to pay off, it has to be value for tax money, and we have to beat out, be, out compete the Chinese economy. Um, and so actually it was easier in a way before. Not so much money, but not so much pressure and demand on quick return on money. So you wonder why I made this detour on the globe from the China, from China to EU. Now I'm coming to Pufendorf Institute of Advanced Studies. Uh, when uh, research and training uh, is uh, more and more assessed and weighted, whether it's worthwhile or not. Uh, when you can get a lot of research money, but you have to prove in advance uh, almost what kind of results you will get and what you will deliver. And I can see you nod. Yes, this is terrible. Uh, and, the, and the best application is actually when you already have the results ready, to just transform them into a new research project. And then you can be sure that you will be able to deliver. In, um, in such times, it's uh, really very uh, important that there is a bottom-up process, uh, that re researchers can get, but just give us a break. Um, that is what Pufendorf EAS is trying to do. A very small number of researchers every year, like 30 to 50 researchers, get a possibility to use the Pufendorf hideaway, I uh, could call it, uh, to do research uh, on their own uh, uh, on their own uh, in, in their own way. And they don't have to promise what they will deliver. They have to promise to work hard. Uh, they have to promise to be engaged. Uh, they have to reach their own goal, but not a goal that is set by somebody else. And um, as we want groups to deal with a uh, tropical issue, a tropical research problem, uh, it, uh, it's natural to <clears throat> believe that um, societal scientific problems topical at the moment, uh, will need uh, interdisciplinary work to be solved. They are not very core disciplinary, but they have to have the, the view and the perspective of several disciplines. And um, uh, this is what we are trying to do, to catalyze interaction between researchers from all kinds of disciplines. Uh, researchers that are looking for, uh, we are looking for unsolved problems uh, <clears throat> uh, at a stage where it would not be possible to attract external funding. So actually we demand very little in a way or very much. Uh, it has to be daring research, it has to be a new issue uh, and it has to be exciting. 
that's the small demands we have. But we are not the only place at this university or in the research society that is talking about interdisciplinarity, working across fields. Uh, zero minutes left, yes. Uh, uh, we are not the only. <clears throat> uh, interdisciplinarity is on everybody's lips these days, actually. Uh, there are huge funding for interdisciplinarity. Uh, European framework programs, Swedish funds, uh, and other funding through Europe is interdisciplinary. So <clears throat> then the Puff and RVS is trying to take interdisciplinary to a next level. Uh, not only put people in a group together and say, have fun, uh, but also pay attention to how work is done, if there are connections made, if there is any use, if there are uh, an outcome of the interdisciplinarity and to aid the process. And here is where the data Pufendorf team comes in again, because this team has been particularly interested and taking their time, not only to do the job on the core theme, data, but also to be observant and try to learn uh, about the process. What's um, good work, what's not good work, and how can this be described and understood? And I'm particularly happy for that. So that's what I'm saying, more data themes uh, in all respects. And. Um, uh, I do wish you a good conference. Thank you very much.